to meet him yet, but we're glad he's here. Amen. I want you just to make yourself at home. Yes. Yes. We are so grateful for what we feel. Yes. I said I'm grateful for what I feel. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't feel anything, you probably haven't reached out yet. When you finally touch him, you know, there was a little lady that was following Jesus. Amen. One time with an issue of blood. She had been sick for many years and had spent all of her money that she had on all the physicians and still was none the better. Uh, Hallelujah. And nothing really happened until she touched Jesus. All right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Amen. Sir. Hallelujah. And can I tell you this morning that nothing will change in your world until you touch Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But once you touch him, everything changes. Amen. This little lady had been forever spending money and, and doing everything she could do and was none the better until she touched Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And when she touched him, that was the end of the story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. She was made whole, the Bible said, from that very moment. Amen. I want to say at the beginning of this how we are still trying to follow city and state guidelines on the COVID, so please uh, respect those around you. Practice social distancing. We have tried to space everybody out on pews, amen, uh, where you're not close to the others around you, amen. Uh, so if you would just watch that. We do have mask and gloves available. Also, there's sanitizer in the back in the lobby, so enough of that, amen. Now let's have church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4, and we're going to begin with verse 1, and we're going to read now to verse 13. And we appreciate everybody being here. I almost got a full house again. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to have a full house before long. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, and as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees, came upon them. <clears throat> you know, I heard one preacher say one time they were called Sadducees because they were sad, you see? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in a hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed in the number of the men was about 5,000, and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together in Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Now, isn't that crazy that they knew there was a name associated with this? Hallelujah. They also knew there was power. Well, duh, a, a man that had been lame for many years, uh, sitting in the gate called Beautiful. Hey, Amen. There's a new, another reason they call that gate Beautiful. He had a different reason for it anyway. Hallelujah. Begging for money, and, and along comes Peter and John. They say, hey, we're just a couple of poor preachers. We don't have any money, but what we do have, we're going to give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. And he reached down and grabbed me by the hand. And the Bible said he ran leaping and praising God. We're in the temple. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. He went to church. First thing he did when he got up out of his situation. Yes. Hallelujah. Watch the sermon by itself. Amen. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he has made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the others whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Look at verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby... We must be saved. You've got to have the name of Jesus applied somewhere in your life or you will not be saved. Amen. Verse 
verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to preach this for a little while from that very thought. When you've been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I, oh, come on. Let's just ask the Lord to help us this morning. God, we need your touch right now, God. Lord, I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this house right now. God, I want you to move through this place. Lord, I want your spirit to begin to speak, Lord, even as we preach, God. Let your spirit talk to hearts today, God. Lord, I'm asking you for a great and a mighty move of the Holy Ghost in this house. We'll give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Let's give you praise right now. Let's worship him. Yes, 
morning in this house. And he's saying, I want to take what you've got and I want to use it for my glory. Hallelujah. I know that you know how to fish. I know, amen, that you know how to catch them. So we're going to use it for my glory. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all God's desire has ever been. Is that he could take a human being and transform him and change his life and rearrange him and make him something that he can use. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Jesus has worshiped him. That they perceived that they were ignorant uh -huh. of learned men. Yes, yeah. They looked at these guys and they said, man, with the background they got, they probably don't even know any Bible. Uh -huh. I mean, these are these are biblical scholars, these, these, these men of the council. These are people that have studied the word from day one. They've been trained, they've been raised up. Amen. To be in their position that they're in. Can I tell you, God's really not interested in your position today. It doesn't make any difference how much scripture you know. Hallelujah. If you're not, if you're not obeying the scripture that matters, it doesn't really make no difference how much scripture you do know. Hallelujah. Oh, can I tell you that our churches today that study the word of God, you know why they study it? To try to disprove other people. Oh, God. I said it. Jesus, help me, Lord. Probably get some ramifications from that. That's all right. I know the word of God. Well. Oh, okay. Amen. A word that I hear in my heart. David said that I might not sin against thee. Hallelujah. I've got the word in the inside. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. I heard one preacher sing a little song here a while back. He said, I got the inside bling bling. <laughs> Hallelujah. The world. Amen. They seek the outside bling bling. They want to look good in everybody's eyes. But can I tell you, the only thing that really matters is if God brings the inside. Hallelujah. And I don't care what the world sees me as. They can see me as ignorant and unlearned if they want to. But you know, I know something they don't know. I know him in the power of the Holy Ghost. My God. Hallelujah. And so they said, these guys don't even know my were trying to disprove Jesus. Amen. Who he was. But these guys already had a relationship with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. They ate with Jesus. Everything they had done had been with him. They were there when he was crucified, standing in the crowd, praying, no doubt. Amen. They were there. Amen. Through the trial, through the crucifixion, they were there. When he gave up the ghost, they, they were there. Amen. When the priests were talking about the, the from top to bottom. They were there, amen, right after he came out of the grave. Oh, hear me today. They were there with him for 40 days as he taught them everything. They were both to do and teach. Amen. Whew. So they may not have known any Bible, but they knew the author. Or do you need? You know, I, I, I was reading an article here a while back about an author that was doing a book signing, and this person, amen, this reporter went in and was going to do a report on the book signing, and, and went in and started trying to talk to this author, amen, and the author at first didn't want to talk to him much, but then kind of the crowd cleared out at the book signing, and they began to talk, and, and, and they began to pick this author's brain to try to figure out what made him write what he wrote, and he began to tell them how, amen, different events in his life had transpired, amen, that made him write what he wrote. Oh, but can I tell you this morning, I'm talking about an author, amen, who is the giver of life. Hallelujah. It, it may have some events in his life that happened in the four Gospels, but that's not what it's all about. Amen. That book was written that you can have life and have it more abundantly. That book was written just for you individually. Hallelujah. My God. And so
So here these guys are. They're ignorant and honor. They don't know beans. But they know Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen. And they were standing by as he was taken up into heaven. Well, come on, we're talking about some folks here that, that, that didn't know anything, that were ignorant and unlearned people. But all of a sudden now, here they are standing on a street corner, amen, raising a man off his feet, or onto his feet, that has never walked, that's been laying in that position for years. They, they, they walked up to him and simply said, we don't have so gold or silver, but what we do have, you really need in the name of Jesus rise up and walk as the Bible said immediately not some time a week or two away but immediately his ankle bones received strength Ooh, hallelujah and he, when he got up you know he didn't just go wow this is wonderful no 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 the Bible said he went running and leaping and praying. Oh, come on, hear me this morning. We, you know why we get so excited? Amen. When the Holy Ghost gets to moving. Do you know why it is that people run the aisles when the Holy Ghost is moving? Do you know what makes people jump up and down when the Holy Ghost is moving or dance in their spirit? I can tell you what it is. Amen. We know what he's done for us. you to know Jesus. When you've been with Jesus, everything changes. Oh, Hallelujah. There was an old boy preached about this a while back. There in the pool at the sheep market. God in the pool was called Bethesda. And the Bible said it had five porches. Now, I don't know what a porch is. Well, I, well the porches we got, the porches they have probably different. Amen. Our porches have screens keep them skeetered out and all that good stuff. You know, in East Texas, that's where I was raised. And uh, when you got mosquitoes that are big enough to carry you off, you put a screen around the porches. <laughs> but the Bible said there were five porches. And in this were a group of folks who all needed something. Uh -huh. And the Bible said that once a year, come on, think about this, just once a year, that an angel of the Lord would touch that water, and the water would begin to move. It said the moving of the water. Hallelujah. Uh -huh, yeah. And the first person that dropped into the water, hallelujah, amen, would be made whole. That's it. Amen. Uh -huh. But then it records there's a man laying on one of the porches who has been there for 38 years in that position. He got his little mat there. Hey man, he may even have an autograph. You know how kids used to get autographs on their cast when they break their arm? You know? Y'all don't know nothing about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, he may have had autographs all over his little mat he was laying on. been there so long. Amen. He, he may have had some important signatures on that map, important to him anyway. I don't know. But I do know this. Amen. That all of a sudden his life was about to change. Ooh, I, I want you to understand something was happening that day he didn't even realize. He woke up that morning. The sun was shining. He was still laying on his mat. And he didn't think that this day was going to be any different from any other day. And it probably wouldn't have been. Except that there was one factor. Amen. And that was Jesus happened to be walking by that day. Hallelujah. And for whatever reason, can I tell you, Jesus will go out of his way for one person. Hallelujah. I've seen him change the whole tenor of a service. Yes, sir. I've seen it when I would be preaching, and the Lord just give me a little right turn right in the middle of it. I never question God. I know what he, he knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. And so I would take that right turn, and sure enough, amen, somebody would come running to the altar and crying and praying, God, 
would you forgive me? I've got to know you in the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to leave here the way that I came in. Oh, hallelujah. But this old boy for 38 years has laid in the same mat on the same porch. Amen. And so all of a sudden he looks up and here comes somebody he's never met before. He, he probably did that all the time. There were probably curiosity seekers. Amen. That walked to the porches and, and talked to the people. You know, some people are just nice like that. But this particular person was different. And he didn't talk to the rest of them. Maybe he just walked straight through and walked straight to this guy. And he said, listen, I know you've been there. The Bible says he knew this. So, of course, he's God in place. I guess he knows everything. And he said he knew he had been in his wife for some time. Amen. And so he walks up to him and he said, look, uh, today is your day. Hallelujah. Amen. I can imagine this guy's face. And he's probably thinking, oh man, he's going to drop a hundred on me. Hallelujah. Oh, my life's about to change. I'm going to get, go downtown, buy me some new clothes. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do something different. Amen. Today, I'll, I'll get a hold of my mom and dad and, and have them come and, and carry me downtown in, the, in, the, in their little buggy. And when we get down there, maybe I can get some new threads on this body. But you know what? It was wasn't money he was about to get. Come on, Come on hear me today. He wasn't about to get some new clothes. He was about to get a new life. Hallelujah. Can I tell somebody that's all Jesus wants to do in this place today? Amen. He wants to give somebody in this house a new life. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. That old life is about worn out. That old life, amen, you're just beginning to get tired of it and you're just going through the motions. Can I say this? A lot of time we spend waking hour simply going through motions we call it life but that ain't life Ooh, he's the life uh, oh, I said he's the life hallelujah Amen. He's the one that will put life in you. Amen. Oh, come on. He'll change you. He'll rearrange you. He'll take out the old way. And he'll put in a brand new heart. Oh, come on. The Bible said he takes out that heart of stone. And he puts in a heart that's pliable. A heart that he can talk to. A heart that will listen to him. A heart that is bound to Jesus now. I don't want the things of the world anymore. I'm done with this world. Can I tell you? Amen. There is a people that have been called out who are not satisfied with anything but him. Yes, yeah. So he walks up to the little guy. He's laying on his mat. And he said, sort of conversation with him. Why are you still here? Well, Lord, you, you don't understand. Uh, when the water's moving, I, I don't have anybody to help me get in it. Well, what if I help you go around it? Uh, what if you don't need that pool? Uh, 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 <laughs> because you see, the angels that touch the pool work for me. Uh, yeah. I'm their boss. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and they don't, I, actually, we don't even need an angel to touch the pool. I can simply speak and you can get up. He said, Fat, in fact, why don't you just take up your bed and walk now? Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 You see, when you come in contact with him, when you've been with Jesus, amen, your whole world becomes brand new. When you've been with Jesus, the old person that you were, you no longer are. Amen, you may be crippled by sin, but when you come in contact with him, he will completely forgive and dissolve all of that. That past is your past now. Hallelujah. Now, Talk to you all about the little lady with the issue of blood. Let me skip on ahead here. There was a, a time Jesus was riding in a boat. And they're going across the Sea of Galilee. And they're, they're headed to what they thought was a certain place. But Jesus had better direction. So they get into the middle of a storm. You know what I think happened? Now this is just an, my little crazy thought. It's not Bible. And there's nothing in there that said they did this. I believe the demons attacked him on that boat, trying to drown him, but Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. 
But that's not the whole story here. I believe that that this, that, in fact, I think the Bible backs this up, if I'm not mistaken, that this boat was going to, to a different location. But after the storm, amen, they saw the closest landfall. Mm. Uh-huh. That's what I believe. That's my, that's my theory, okay? And so they go to this little place called the Gathering. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Can I tell you the devil always knows, amen, when God's about to do something? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Okay, you don't believe that. Come no, on that. now. If you have as much experience doing that idiot as I have, uh, amen. That moron. Uh, huh? Okay, yeah, you're not supposed to call people morons. This ain't a people I'm talking about. It's an idiot. It's a ignorant. Uh-huh. I call him an idiot, but he's very, very sly, very slick. He knows exactly what it takes to tweak you. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they, they get to this, this little place called the Gatherings. And, and in this town, there was a man who was possessed by many demons. In fact, they called him Legion. That was that's the, the name the Bible called him. Amen. And if you want to know what a Legion is, ask my son. He, he knows all about this stuff. Amen. That was something the Roman soldiers had was a Legion. Okay. Several thousand men in a legion. And, and here, here, here are these demons. All these demons are tormenting this guy. In fact, the, the people in the town had tried their best to help him. And hello, you can't help a demon possessed guy if you don't have the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said Beelzebub can't cast out Beelzebub. Amen. So if, if, if people try to cast out and they've got demons themselves, it ain't going to work. Amen. It might look like it's working, but it ain't working. Hallelujah. Uh, but can, can I tell somebody here this morning, amen, there's this guy, he comes running out of the tombs. He was living in the tombs, the Bible said. He wasn't living in town. They came to the beach, and when they landed, he comes running out of the tombs, and he runs down to the beach. You know why? Because those demons knew who was about to set foot on their territory. Oh, can I tell you, God Almighty in flesh was stepping foot off the boat onto their land. Amen. They came, and they fell at his feet. What does that tell me today? Amen. That tells me that if you've got the Holy Ghost, you shouldn't be afraid of any devil. Hallelujah. Because they come and they fall at the feet of Jesus. You've got Jesus on the inside. They're not falling in honor of you. They're falling because of him. Amen. But can I tell somebody here this morning? Amen. There's a power of God that will come inside of you. That will bind every spirit of hell. Hallelujah. I got my amen corner going over here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so these, these demons begin to cry out. They begin to scream, God, send us into our darkness. Don't send us away before our time. They know, they know that's coming, okay? What do you want me to do? You know, that's pretty good. Jesus, give them, give them a decision. What do you want to do? Uh-huh. Can we go into these pigs over here? There you go. Well, good. There you're getting something that kind of more or less fits you guys. <laughs> go. And a thousand plus demons leave this guy. And they hit the ground to run. Hallelujah. I don't think they even touched the ground. I just think they just jumped. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Straight into those pigs. And the pigs couldn't even stand them. And the Bible said the pigs ran down the mountain into the lake and drowned it. And the people that were watching the pigs, the people that were keeping the pigs, amen, they began to run into town. And they began to tell people what was going on. And when the townspeople came back out, do you know what they found, Brother West? They found Jesus having fellowship with a guy who used to have demons. Uh, they found a man who always went around naked all the time, screaming and hollering and, and breaking chains and breaking ropes and breaking all these things they were trying to, to tie him with, getting out of the handcuffs and all these crazy things. And here they find him sitting clothed and in his right mind. You know why? Because he had been with Jesus. Now, Jesus was a normal man in some ways. He had friends on earth. Now, you know, you build friendships.
friendships. I'm a pastor and I build friendships. I've got, got great friends. Hey, Amen. I've got these, this, church, this church family. All oh, these are my friends. Yeah. Well, they didn't say nothing. Did they? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, At least I believe they're all my friends. <laughs> but there are people in this world that are my true friends. Amen. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what kind of situation I'm in. I can pick them up, pick up a phone and call them. I pick them up. Pick up a phone and call them. And they would be there in a, in a moment's notice. Amen. And, and so Jesus had established some friendships like this. And, and one of the friendships he had was with a, a couple of ladies. One was named Mary, one was named Martha, and they had a brother named Lazarus. Now, Jesus is busy ministering. You know, we get busy. We're preachers, and we get busy, and, and he's busy ministering, and he's doing his thing, and, and all of a sudden, somebody comes to him with a message, and he looks at the note, and he said, well, boys, he said, Lazarus is sick unto death, and Mary and Martha want us to come and pray for him. And he said, I said oh, good, let's go. He said, not yet. We're not ready. Hmm. Hallelujah. Now, you know, we live in an instant society, so we think God needs to be ready when we're ready now. God, we're ready for it to happen right now. And God said, nah. Nah. We gotta let a few things die first. Oh Lord, we all get quiet on me now. But we understand that Jesus always has a plan. Hallelujah. Oh my, my, my. And so he pillows around for three days before he says, okay, let's go. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they go over to where Mary and Martha and Lazarus live at. And when they get there, they're met at the door by Martha. And she comes out going, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. He said, well, he already knew he died because he told them all the way he's dead. First he told them, he said, Lazarus is asleep. And they said, well, if he's sleeping, that's a good thing. And he just said, he's dead. Hello. Read it. It's in there. He didn't say hello. He just said he's dead. <laughs> but I imagine he felt like saying hello. Anyway, they get there, and they're met by all these grieving people. And, 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 and this is the only time the Bible really records Jesus crying. But uh, uh, he, he said, okay, so where you laid him at? And, and they said, he's in the tomb out back. Uh, and so they go down to the family cemetery. And the Bible said, on the way, Jesus wept. Can I tell you, he was not weeping for his friend Lazarus that had died. You know what he was weeping for? He was weeping for the people that were around him that were filled with unbelief. His very best friends on earth, some of his very best friends did not even believe. Oh, come on, that he was who he was. Oh, obviously they didn't. And he wept because they did not believe, amen, in him. And so he talked about he's he going to resurrect him. And they said, well, we know he'll rise in the resurrection, Lord. Uh -huh. My goodness. Don't you know who it is you're walking with? Listen, I, you know the problem with getting to be friends like that with the, with Jesus. The the real problem with that was, a man. Now he just became a mortal man in their eyes. Uh -huh. Now he could have. Oh, come on! They had faith that he could have healed him before he died. Uh -huh. That's why they said, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. There you go. But now that he's dead, everything changed. No. No. He's still God. Hallelujah. He, he, he can take life. He can give life. Hallelujah. He's still in control. Uh, he's still, oh, the Bible said he's the master of every situation. I don't know what kind of situation you brought into this house this morning, but he's the master of it. Hallelujah. Come on, it makes no difference what you're going through. It makes no difference what you're dealing with. He is the master of every situation. Come on, there's nothing that's going to come into his hands that he didn't experience himself. And he knows how to handle everything. Behind that are weeping, you know, they had to hire weepers a lot 
of times. All these people are following, they're all weeping, they're, they're all dressed in black and everything is all gloomy and doomy. Amen. Can I tell you right now, amen, we have been in a time where it looks like everything is all gloomy and doomy, and it is for this world. But can I tell you, if you've got the Holy Ghost, amen, this is getting to be an exciting time because we recognize the fact that this is probably the beginning of the end. Our months before we're out of here. Hallelujah. And so, Jesus said, now look, I want you to watch what Jesus did. He walks up to the tomb where they laid him at. Now, he had the power to raise him from the dead. He had the power to remove the stone, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got angels to do that job. He didn't want to do it himself. But you know what he said? He told them, roll the stone away. Yeah. You know why? Because that was an act of faith. He was making them use faith now. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. They had rolled the stone in there because their lack of faith had said, it's over, it's dead, he's gone. We're going to bury all oh my. We're going to bury those things. We're going to bury those what could have been miracles. Uh -huh. Oh, Lord. Come on, oh, no, 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 no. Come on. We're going to cover up. Amen. And so Jesus said, let's roll away the stone. And one of the girls said, you know what? By now he's speaking. He's been dead three days. Yeah. <laughs> well, in normal sense, yeah. Uh -huh. But in God's sense, he just sleep. <laughs> Woo. And so he just said, he just they rolled the stone and they like obedient. Now can I tell you obedience goes a long ways in God's kingdom? The Bible tells me the obedient is the one that's gonna eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Oh, the willing and obedient. You're gonna to have to be willing if you want the, the spirit of God to dwell with you. You've got to be obedient to, to the word of God if God is going to dwell in you. Hallelujah. Oh, can I tell somebody here this morning that's exactly what God wants to do today? Amen. He wants to come into your world. He wants, oh, come on, he wants to take that dead man and revive him into something brand new. Hallelujah. And so he just simply speaks, Lazarus, come forth. Now I've heard people say, preachers say, well, the reason he called him by name is because if he just said come forth, everybody come up. <laughs> Maybe so. I don't know, but I do know this. He called, his, called him by name. Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said he came out of that tomb. Amen. When he came out of that tomb, he was tied up tight. Amen. He was tied up tight. They had him round, wrapped around with gray clothes. He couldn't hardly move. He came out. You know what Jesus did? He didn't say, Kazam, and it was all gone. He said, you guys did it. You unwrap him. Hallelujah. Y'all the one that put him in that position. Y'all the ones that's going to take him out. Oh, can I tell somebody here this morning that God does not want us, amen, to try to hinder the flow of his spirit in our lives by doing things in the natural that will cause him grief. And so he said, I want you to undo it. Loose him and let him go. Woo. Can I tell you, he's in the house this morning and he wants to loose you. Hallelujah. You've been bound by things of this world. You've been bound up by things of this world. I want to read you one more. John chapter 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought him unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that should, such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Hmm. 
So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin, let him first cast a stone at her. Mm. Any takers? And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now the Bible won't say what he wrote on the ground. You know what I think he wrote on the ground? <laughs> this is just my crazy imagination. But I think he was writing all those people that were standing there were stoned. I think he was just writing their sins on the ground. Uh-huh. <laughs> Amen. He, he just lined them out. And because he said, okay, he just without sin, let him first cast the stone. They saw their name on the ground. I saw that sin. They just dropped the stone. Now you can, you can believe that's just my theory. Hallelujah. But you know what? I know that he knows every oh, sin you yeah. commit. Oh, uh, he knows oh. every sin that you commit. Amen. Can I tell you that there is a book of life, amen, that is in, in the old, come on, in the heavens. And when you get to heaven, the Bible said you're going to be judged by two things, by the books. That's the 66 books of the Bible, amen. And you're going to be judged by that book, the book of life, whether your name is written there or not, amen. Well, you understand Amen. You've got to have your name written there. So how do we go about getting our name in the book? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, he stooped down and on the ground again. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Now, this is in, this is in church. You know that, okay? So when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of and there's another story in Luke chapter 7. I'm pleased to quote that. There was a man, Sadducee, by the name of Simon. And, and, and Simon was, you know, he had all of his friends there with him. And he said, you know, I've invited Jesus over for, for lunch today. I want everybody to be here. We're going, you know, we're going. I think he was planning on cornering him. That's what I think he was going to try to do. But the Bible didn't even refer to that. He just said that they got him in the house. And, and so they're, they're sitting there and they're eating and they're, they're going about their business and they're talking to Jesus and they may be trying to trip him up. I don't know, but they can he trip up God. Come on. He wrote the book. <laughs> and, and so here he is. He's sitting there talking and all of a sudden, this woman comes in. Now, this is not any particular woman. This is a harlot. This is a whore. And she walks in, and she kneels down at Jesus' feet. And tears are just falling out of her eyes. She's crying, and, uh, and those tears are falling and, and hitting her feet, and uh, hitting Jesus' feet. And uh, she takes his sandals off, and the, those tears, she's crying so hard, those tears are just falling and falling and falling. And... And she takes her hair and she begins to dry the, the tears off of his feet with her hair. And, 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 and the thought in the house was, doesn't he know who this is? Doesn't he know this is a woman of the night? Doesn't he have any clue? He claims to be God. Doesn't he know this? Jesus said, hmm. So you've been watching me and this woman. He said, Simon, I got something to say to you. I've been here all this time with you, and the custom in that day, the roads were dusty. They didn't have paved roads like we've got today. The Romans paved some, but they weren't my cars are. But, but it, it, the roads were dusty, and, and they didn't wear socks. They just wore sandals. And so when you would come into the house, the guest of the house, or the person that had the house, you were their guest. You walk in there, amen. They had a servant. If they had servants, they had a servant come and bring a bowl of water, take your sandals off, and wash your feet to make you comfortable while you were there. 
And so Jesus looked at Simon. He said, I have somewhat to say to you. He said, since I've been here all this time, you have not washed my feet. But this woman had continually washed my feet with her tears and, and dried them with her hair. And then he began to go into this discourse about to whom much is given, much is required, and who little is given, little is required, and all this kind of thing. She said, he said, and one other thing you need to look at. You, you usually, you know, when, when a guest is in your house, especially one of high esteem, you anoint their head with oil. That was part of the custom. I, I don't know what the effect was, but that was what they did. And, and, I, and he said, you did not do that to me. But this woman, now the Bible said in another particular portion of Scripture concerning this, that this little alabaster box that she had full of ointment cost her a whole year's wages. Lord have mercy. And she broke that alabaster box and she poured that oil on the feet of Jesus. She anointed him. Hallelujah. And he said, you didn't give me that oil, but she has. Oh, hallelujah. And he said, her sins, which were many, are forgiven her. Amen. The Bible said, then they marveled, and they were saying, who is this that forgives sins also? Oh, come on, you see, there was a difference in the room. There were two different types of people. Amen. There were people there who were questioning who Jesus really was, but then there were people people there who had an idea. I believe I know who this really is. Hallelujah. And, and they brought out the oil of worship. Hallelujah. And began to worship him while the others just went their way and ignored the things that they should have been doing. And, and in their mind were trying to determine who he really was. But can I tell you, when you've been with Jesus, there's no doubt in your mind who he really is. you've experienced him in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now what's the Holy Ghost? This is pretty God. Yes. Jesus said it's expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter cannot come. Hallelujah. You understand these guys that we started this with today. Amen. These apostles, these disciples of Jesus. These were the guys that were on the seashore, and he called them. These were the guys that were there at the Last Supper. These were the guys that saw him when he was crucified. These are the guys that, that went to the tomb with the girls and, and noticed that he was gone after they went and got him. These are the guys that he appeared with on the road to Emmaus. These are the guys, amen, that watched him be ascended up into heaven after he had been with them for 40 days teaching them how to start the church. Hallelujah. These are the guys that in Acts chapter 2, we're all sitting together in the upper room, 120 people, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, when the Holy Ghost fell on them all. These are the guys. Peter in particular, that stood up on the day of Pentecost. When people begin questioning what's going on, we see these people, they look like they're drunk. But if they're drunk, in the first place, if they're drunk, really, how can they even understand? How can they even talk right now? Second place is how can they talk in our language if they're drunk and they're doing it perfectly? These are all Galileans, but we hear them all speaking in our tongue. The, the, they're giving glory to God. They're worshiping him in our languages. How's this happening? You don't just get drunk and start speaking another language. Peter said this is that. Spoken of by the prophet Joel in the last days, said God. Anybody believe we're in the last days? Yes. Just wait a little bit longer and that Bible will completely be fulfilled and you'll see. Amen. If you don't get the Holy Ghost, you'll be here to watch it. I don't want to be around here. 
Amen. Because when the Spirit of God's gone from this earth, guess what's going to be here? Nothing but demonic powers, the ones that are already working. Amen. They're already at work right now. But you know what's holding them at bay? A church. A church. Hallelujah. A church that has been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of God. A church that knows how to pray. A church that is fasting. A church that is saying, God, we want to see a few more people brought in before you come back. We don't want you to come back right now. Don't come back yet. But we're in the last days. Peter quoted it. Job 2 28. In the last days, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Come on, it's happening right now. It's happening in this day and hour. <laughs> People are receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost just as they did on the day of Pentecost. They're speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. Amen. Come on, you don't believe that. I know you don't believe that today. You think that people get up and they just gibber jabbers. I'm sorry, but they speak in other tongues. They speak in another language that is either known or has been known in this world. Amen. They, they speak that tongue. Amen. When they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, we had a guy in service one time and this is not patting me on the back but man, the Holy Ghost was moving and I was just speaking just just speaking in tongues just worshiping God. The Holy Ghost came on me I could feel such a powerful anointing and began speaking in tongues. Immediately following the service I've never seen this guy before or since. This guy walks up to me and says, you speak beautiful ancient Hebrew. And turned and walked out. I've never seen him again. I don't know who he was. I, you know what? It was just confirmation to me that God knew what he was doing. When he filled me with the Holy Ghost, I spoke in another language. Hallelujah. I, I spoke in another language. Uh, come on, I, I have a friend. He's dead now. Amen. But at 10 years old, Jimmy Betrayal received the Holy Ghost in a camp meeting on, in East Texas. And, and right beside him was a man from South America. He was taken from the jungles of South America and brought uh, by the missionary up to America to, for that camp meeting and he was there and at that camp meeting uh, this little boy began to speak with tongues as the Holy Ghost filled him uh, and standing right next to him uh, was this missionary and next to him was this guy uh, from the jungles of South America they only spoke that dialect of Spanish in his tribe nowhere else in the world is it spoken but 10-year-old Jimmy Betrayal began to speak in tongues when the Holy Ghost came in. And guess what language he spoke? He spoke that native guy's tribal language to a T. Oh, my God. You know, if you're, if, you're a, if you're one of these guys that tries to figure everything out, just work on that one a while. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Lee Stone King talks about a time he was sitting in a service, he wasn't preaching that, and he was just sitting in the service, and they began to worship. And I, I know I've told the churches before, but there's people here that haven't been here. We want them to hear this. And Brother Stone King, everybody stood up and began to worship, and he stood up and began to worship, and the Holy Ghost came on him, and he began to speak in tongues, and and, and he didn't think nothing about it because I mean he does it all the time. Hallelujah! When the Holy Ghost comes on you, that's you to the end result. Amen. Is you begin to speak with other tongues, and so he sat back down and was still worshiping God, but he sat down, and the man in front of him turned around and said, "Sir, you speak wonderful ancient Latin." <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Stone King said, "I don't speak ancient Latin." And after church, the guy came to him and he said, can I tell you, you, he said, you were speaking it perfectly. I can't believe you don't know it. He said, no, sir, that was the Holy Ghost. And of course, in Brother Stone King's way, he said, then he had to go in and receive the Holy Ghost for himself. <laughs> because it's for you. It's for everybody. Whosoever will, let him come and take freely of the waters of life. Amen. 
there when you know Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. When you've been with him, hallelujah, there's something that changes on the inside. It takes that old life of dullness. It takes that old life of striving in this world. And it gives you a joy and it gives you a peace that passeth all understanding. People don't understand while the world's going crazy and people running here and there because of this junk that's going on out there. Which I, I got my opinion. I ain't going to give them to you. But you know where I stand. Uh, yeah. In the midst of all this, all the fear, all the things that are gripping people's hearts and people, the Bible says this would happen. It said in the last days that people's hearts would be failing them for fear. Uh -huh. Fear of the things that are coming on earth. Not what's happening right now, but the things that are coming. This is not nothing compared to what's coming. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. This is a drop in the bucket to compare to what's coming. But can I tell you today that we've got a God that is in control. Hallelujah. Come on, the Bible tells me that perfect love casts out fear. Hallelujah. I don't have to fear what's going on. I don't have to fear what's going to happen tomorrow. Because if I'm holding on to his hand, his perfect love goes through me. And if it's flowing through me, amen, it gives me calm. It gives me peace. Hallelujah. Come on. Used to sing this song. There's peace in the midst of the storm. Uh, he gives me peace in the midst of the cold dark night. Oh, Hallelujah. And there's peace in the midst of the storm. Oh, yeah. Can we stand right now? If you're here today, and you haven't ever received the Holy Ghost, you don't know Jesus in the power of the Spirit. Huh? Amen. These altars are open. Hallelujah. Well, how do I get the Spirit of God? I'll tell you how. It's very simple. Peter went on to preach that day on the day of Pentecost when people began to question what this was. He began to preach. I, and I gave you part of his sermon, Joel 2.28. In the last day, said God, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And then they begin to question Peter and said, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to have this? We don't want to be lost. Lost. We want whatever it is that you guys have got. And so Peter stood up in the midst of them and said, repent. Repentance means an about face. Amen. That means the way you're walking, you turn away from it and go the opposite direction. Amen. You leave the sin nature behind and you walk toward God. That's repentance. Amen. You ask God's forgiveness and you never go back to that sin again. You keep walking toward him. Hallelujah. That's repentance. Repent. And then be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's in there. Read it. Acts chapter 2, verse 30. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall. It's a promise. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes in, Amen. Guess what? He's going to come in. And you're going to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Hallelujah. I don't know what tongue you'll speak, whatever tongue God chooses. But I do know you will speak with tongues. And you know what it is? It's a sign to the believer and to the unbeliever both yes, that you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. This altar is open. Church, would you come and gather around? Let's find us a place to pray. If you want to come and pray with the church, we invite you to do so. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we want you to stay just a little bit and let us meet you after church service if I haven't met you already. Amen. But I want everybody that will to come around the front right now. Let's find a place and let's talk with God. Let's just talk to him. Come on, you just need to ask his forgiveness of your sin. You just need to turn aside from that sin and turn towards him. Because when you've been with Jesus, amen, there will be a joy that will fill your soul. Hallelujah. When you've been with Jesus, amen, you may have issues in your life, but guess what? They don't matter anymore. The only thing that matters is I can feel his presence in the midst of it all. I can feel his presence. I can feel his presence here right now. Come on, just reach out to him. If you would, just you don't want to come around the front, just pray where you're at. That's fine. The main thing is just pray. Mighty God, mighty God, we'll just reach out to Come on, church, we need to dig in right now. We need to dig in right now. But I need you. 
Come on, begin to talk to him. Lord, I need you. God, would you search my soul? Would you forgive me, God? Lord, would you cleanse my mind? Would you cleanse my heart? Would you cleanse my soul, God? In the name of Jesus. Come on, just begin to talk to him. Come on, ask for him. Just repent of your sins. Just let God know I'm turning away. I'm not going back to him. Come on. My Lord and my God, in the name of Jesus right now, God, we love you, God, I love you, we love you, Lord, we worship you, God, we praise you, God. I love you, God, I love you, God, I love you, God, I love you,